Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on configuring a slider control in Excel VBA. I have on this worksheet an orange rectangle. If I right click, move down to assign macro, it's associated here with a subroutine named open form. When I move over to the Visual Basic Editor, that's Alt F11, I have this subroutine open form with one line of code, main.show. This displays the user form I've constructed for this project. The name of the user form is main, and it has four controls on it. The slider control, two text box controls, and a progress bar. The text box controls will be on this toolbox by default. So I just use this toolbox, selected the text box control, and placed it on the user form. However, the slider control and the progress bar are not on this toolbox by default. Just go up to Tools, Additional Controls, and in this list box, scroll down and you'll find the progress bar control and the slider control. Now here they're already selected. If you don't have them on the toolbox, find them, select them, and click OK, and then they'll appear on this toolbox. And I put them on the user form using the same method as I did for the text box controls. Just selecting them, dragging them onto the user form, and resizing them. So I'm going to place some code behind these controls to demonstrate how the slider control works. The slider control has a number of properties. In this first text box, I'm going to set that to change the max property. The max property sets the number of ticks on the slider control. So by default, there are 10 ticks on the slider control. I've changed this one to be set at 100. However, when I code this text box, the max property can be adjusted with this text box. For this second text box, I'm going to set that to reflect the value of the slider control. And if it's changed, it will change the slider control to match. And then I'm going to set up the progress bar so that it is equal to the slider control and text box too. So first for the slider control, I'm going to double click on the slider control and we have this private subroutine slider one click. And I'm just going to put two lines of code here. Progress bar one dot value equals slider one dot value and text box two dot value equals slider one dot value. And text box two is the second one here on the user form. So next I'm going to configure text box one double click and I want the max property of the slider control and the progress bar to be set to the value in text box one. So I'll paste this code in. So we have slider one dot max equals text box one value and progress bar one dot max equals text box one dot value. And then for the final subroutine, I'm going to double click on text box two. And again, there'll just be two lines of code here. Slider one dot value equals text box two dot value. And progress bar one dot value equals text box two dot value. So every time text box two is changed by the user, slider one and progress bar one will change accordingly. They will have the same value as text box two. So to demonstrate these subroutines, I'm going to go back to the worksheet and open this user form by clicking on the orange rectangle here that's associated with that open form subroutine. And I want to set the max value for slider one and the progress bar. I'm going to set that at 10 to start with. And after making that change, there are 10 ticks on the slider control. And as I move the slider control to one, text box two changes to one, and the progress bar changes to one as well. I move up to five. Again, these both change. If I go in the, into text box two and change this value to eight, slider one and progress bar one 
will also change to 8. So moving up here to text box 1, if I add a 0, again now we have 100 ticks on the slider control. And the 8 is still the value, however now it's farther over to the left because the scale is set to 100 instead of 10. So 8 is now 8% instead of 80% of the max of both the slider control and the progress bar control. So as I move the slider control, again text box 2 changes and the progress bar changes. And I can also go into text box 2 and make the change here. So this gives you an idea on how the slider control influences other controls and how it can be influenced. One last property I want to cover with the slider control over in the Visual Basic Editor is how the ticks are arranged on the control itself. By default, they're displayed on the bottom. If I select this control and move over to Properties and move to the property Tick Style, we can see it's set to bottom right. I can also change it to top left both, so now the ticks are on the top and the bottom, or I can have no ticks displayed. So you have those four choices using the tick style property. I hope you found this video on configuring a slider control in Excel VBA to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.